Hey, what's up, everyone, and welcome back to the podcast. This is Two Catholic Dudes, and my name is Ryan Klaus. My name is Danny Cleary. And as always, we're not priests, we're not theologians, we're just two Catholic dudes, and we're talking about our faith. And today we're doing another one of our uh, new... New format. New format, new style. uh, The Two Catholic Dudes Bible Study. We're diving into the Word. Diving into the Word. People were saying before... You need more. You need more meat. More meat and potatoes. Stop talking content. about yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> so we're listening. We are listening, and we are here, and we are diving into the Word. Yeah, we're gonna open up the Scriptures. Well, we got some really good responses from our previous episodes on the parables and on uh, encountering God in the whisper. Yeah, the when Book we of Kings. Yeah, dove open Kings. So uh, we're gonna chat today a bit. What, are we, what? Tell the tell the good people. What, today what are we we're gonna about? do a. Uh, one of the more well-known popular scripture stories, parable, uh, the lost son. We were going to incorporate, or the prodigal son. We were going to incorporate this in our parables episode, but we figured there's so much to talk about and unpack from this scripture and that we can relate to in our lives today. We just thought we'll just do a whole episode. Do the whole episode on the on, prodigal on son. this one. So, so. it's late, you guys. We're, we're trying to do a marathon today. That We are two days before... In our time, not in podcast time, but in our time right now, two days before the March for the Martyrs, which is on September 5th. So right now it's September 3rd. We're trying to knock out four episodes because we don't get to see each other too often. So Danny's here for a few days. We're trying to knock out four podcasts in these couple days that we're here together. But, you know, it takes a lot of energy, a lot of effort to to do these. You know, we talk for between uh, 40 minutes to an hour. Yeah, roughly. roughly. And that takes a lot. Like when when you're when you're giving your all, you know, these. These podcasts, for some reason, they take a lot out of you. I remember, like, when we would do, uh, there was a couple of the times when you first moved down here, and uh, I would come down and we would knock out two, like, back to back. And I would be driving home, and I was like, my voice is gone. And, like, I'm tired. Yeah. Uh, I remember being exhausted after we would do them. And, uh, you know, because back when you lived down where we lived, it was just like a, Every Thursday morning, we'd knock out a podcast and go about our day. But then when we started, like, all the big setup that we do now and uh, you know, having to do more prep work and all that stuff, like, it, I was like, man, two in a row, two in a day is Two in a day is, is tough. Is we tough. did three one time, and that was that was bonkers. brutal. Yeah. It was bonkers. Uh, speaking of doing all our production, the last one, you mentioned that, like, I look good with, when I wear colors. Right, you need more color. And I've worn, like, the same T-shirt on every podcast. If you guys are listening only, then doesn't you never d- know. It doesn't affect you. So uh, I was looking through t- I mean, you, you know what? I'm going to wear this bright, obnoxiously bright red, red T-shirt. Shirt. And nice. it's a... It's, uh, there's a lot of colors happening here. I'm, I'm not too uh, upset with this footage here today. So, again, if you guys are not watching, yeah. uh, if you're not driving, please, we encourage you to watch us on YouTube. Uh, even if you just put it on in the background, that helps our channel grow on yeah. YouTube. It helps the internet algorithms. The uh, And throw in a comment as well, even if it's just, you know... Hi there. Put the little or, prayer or hands something. if you can do. If you're if you're on your phone, put those prayer hands. We, yeah. You know, anything that, that that lets the algorithms know that people are watching, people are engaged. So yeah. hit that, hit the subscribe, hit that like, hit the bell, and just throw a quick comment on. We love seeing that. We'll we'll try to get to them and engage back with you. We love conversing with you. So yeah, um, please join us on there. Um, yeah, let's dive in. You know, if we can get under forty five minutes on this one, I. That would be quite a that's, feat. That'd that, be an that's, accomplishment. That's, that's the move. Yeah. So let's see if we can if we can make this happen. The do this is our third two Catholic dudes Bible study. I think I don't know who's counting. Technically, yeah. So uh, we're not going to read through the whole scripture, the whole the whole uh, prodigal son, because we, you guys we have know it for it. reference. You guys know it. we know it. You guys have heard it. We've heard it. I mean, if you've if you've grown up Catholic Christian in any way, shape, or form, you know you've heard this story. Right. Yeah. This is like the the pinnacle parable i would say it's like the second most popular after the lost sheep yeah but this one i uh, the lost sheep is is super well known super powerful quick quick and to the point but this one there's so much to to there's a lot to pull from and there's a lot of things that i think that uh people don't realize about the story and i wanted to dive into that and speak to those as well as the more obvious, um, yeah, yeah, a lot, a lot stuff. of the stuff is a surface level that everybody's like, oh yeah, I get that, yeah. And, you're, and if you're, if you're, if you're that person where you're like, I get it, I, I read and I know all about the prodigal son, 
stick with us. There might be yeah, something maybe. that you can pull from her, right? Yeah, totally. Or maybe you just love hearing our banter. Who yeah. knows? So let's break it down. Let's let's break down what's going on. All right, I got I got I got the Bible open. You're going from memory. I'm gonna go from memory. Just like we did that one time with uh, with Guess Who. Yes. When we played Guess Who from memory. You guys yeah. know the game Guess Who from the '90s? You're like, get to the scripture. <laughs> <laughs> okay, get to the scripture, Danny. Um, so. Where does this start? I'm, we're setting the scene. Set the scene. Okay. There's a man. He's got two sons. Great. Two of them. <laughs> and uh, one of them goes, hey, Dad, I need my inheritance. You know, I need the money that, that I would get if you died, but I need that now. Okay. I'm going to stop right there. Okay. First of all, wait, do we know if it's the older or younger son, does it say? Uh, I don't believe it says. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look. The man had a man had two sons and the younger son. Okay, good the, to know. The That's less, where we have the reference. The less worldly, the less experienced, the 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 more, um, uh, the more was uh, the less experienced son. I'm just yeah, gonna go for sure. that, for lack of better words. It's late. Okay, so the 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 important thing you said he asked for his inheritance, though the father was still alive because yes. you would normally get an inheritance after the passing after the passing of your parents your your father well in those days like just your father yeah. right uh when you when your dad dies you get the inheritance but so him telling his father hey yo i want my inheritance early like, i can't wait for you to die you know I what he's saying now. is you are dead to me yeah wow you're you're dead to me dad i want my money now so i can go off and do my own thing right i'm not working on your farm anymore so in his heart his father, he, 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 his father was dead to him, and, he, and that. So that's that's really the 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 deeper meaning there, and we we pass over that. Yeah. This reading is, is pretty long, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, when you when you hear that at at the mass, whatever Sunday that is, you're like the prodigal son. You're like, oh boy, better. Uh, it's gonna be a long one. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like oof. You just stre- stretch, you just stretch it out, kinda, yeah. you know, but it's uh, like on Good Friday when you know the passion's coming. But it's so set. it's so long, and so often we skip over those little details. But it's yeah. not till you dive it, you dive open and, and like and stop after each kind of line and say, what is that? What is the deeper meaning there? Right? Yeah. You just breeze through it. You'll get the big chunks. Yeah, you'll get the major points. But th- that's a big thing right that's there. That's a huge. His thing. dad was was already dead to him. Yeah, to him. I figured that. he was still yeah because he, he wasn't planning on coming back. Right. Just take his money and run. And then and then. F- and then what happens after that? What does so the I'm, father say? So father says, you know, oh, all right. Well, here, you, here you go. Here you go. So what would a normal dad in that situation do? Like if, if you I asked your dad I went to right my now, dad right now and said, dad, give me your inheritance. I'm out of here. My dad would just say, "Good, you're out of here. No. Uh, there's no way my dad would do that. Say, son, I love you, but like, no. But like, that's no way. That's ridiculous, right? Yeah. He would try to talk me out of it, I think. Or, Right. You, know, you, you try to talk you out of like why are you doing no, this, but yeah, like there's no way. But the, the it's a simple answer. The father says, "All right, here you go. No questions asked. Crazy. You know, I know. And and if you tell if you even told your dad, Dad, you are dead to me. I want my money that I was that I'm gonna get when you, when you die because you in my mind you're already dead to me. And and for the father at that point to say, Oh yeah. Here you go, son. Which is crazy. You know I love you. Here it's, you go. It's crazy because like I get it, like your kids and you like the family, but it's like nobody owes you anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? You got to make your own way in mm-hmm. this world, and like I, I, you know, historically maybe it was different and things like that, but like it's always something that I thought I was like, I would never have the audacity to say that to to my father. Mm-hmm. You know, like hey, give me what you owe me. Like he owes you nothing. He raised you and gave you everything. There's got to be something that it is the younger son because I know the 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 oldest son has the most rights to right. to which everything, is, which is actually me. I joke with my dad all the time that the estate is mine. Right, his house will be mine. Yeah, so the the eldest son would get most of of everything, but yeah. the, uh, does it say it's is it half? Is it uh? So the 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 father divided the property between them. So there, there's got to be something there that yeah. he has two sons, and probably in those times the the older son would get the lion's share, if not like all of it. Yeah. And and he said, not only okay, I know that you said that I'm dead to you, but I'm gonna equally split this up. We're gonna equally <laughs> split this up, right? Yeah. So so he takes it, heads into wherever he's going. I'm gonna uh, stop I, again. <laughs> I, 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 I but I always made the joke that was uh, he went to Vegas. <laughs> And right, right, uh, right. Well, what, how is this speaking us 
speaking to us today. Yeah, it? exactly. Right? He, he went off and and squandered all of it. Yes, I want quickly. To, I want to look at exactly the wording that it says though. It says after a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off to a distant country where he squandered his inter- inheritance on a life of dissipation. Uh, the key word is to a distant country. I, I I would argue that the key word that you said there is the is you spent it on a life of dissipation. Well, yeah, yeah. So those are the I think the I, the underlying the, the the more subtle the subtle thing that I want to look at because right. yeah, squander. Yes, we get it. Dissipation. So basically, wasting your inheritance on. I think. Right. Uh, well, I think there's a deeper thing than that. Okay, go in on. There. And 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 well, let's let's get to your point first because we'll go in the order of the story. Yeah. Is. I understand the point of like a distant land because we know that that God God is always here. You know, it's we're either moving towards God or we're running away from God. So that the point that they're making there is the distance that they that he left his father. He went away right. from his father. He was with God. Yeah, he had everything. He said, he wanted, "God, you're dead to me." Or dad, father, right? Right. You're dead to me. I'm gone. And he went off to a distant land as far away from God as you could get. Think of it like in the Old Testament, um, Israel is is God's people. That's like his land when the people there are like with God. And then when like uh, when they're removed and they're and they're enslaved in Babylon, Babylon represents everything far away from God. So it's that kind of those that kind of symbolism is we are we are so far away we're enslaved in a land of sin sure you know that's where i, I read that yeah i i think that the the part where he says where the the where he squanders inheritance in a life of uh what was the word Dis, uh dissipation dissipation um is so and this is how i explain it when i when i talk about it is all of us as human beings we're looking for a life we're looking to be fulfilled Right, we're looking to be filled up and fulfilled in our life. Nobody wants to feel empty. Nobody wants to feel alone. Nobody wants to feel like they're they, they don't have a purpose. And I think that the fulfillment, especially with young people, I imagine that this per, that this in this in the story, the son is young. You know, that we as young people, we we will look for fulfillment in everywhere. Maybe it's having a lot of friends. Nowadays, it's having a lot of followers on Instagram, getting a lot of affirmation. For some people, it's turning to substances because for that short amount of time, we're kind of filled up for a second. But what we what we fail to see is the lasting fulfillment that we really we desire. Most of these worldly things, this life of dissipation, we may be filled up for a moment, but it isn't lasting. It will go away, and then you will be emptier than you were when you when you when you went to it in the first place. I think so. We look at it, this person is empty because he doesn't know. He doesn't realize what he's leaving, what he's got. And then he goes and he takes everything and he squanders it, trying to fill himself and fill himself and fill himself, not realizing that he's just you. You can't fill yourself as quickly as you're to fill, emptying yourself. He's trying to fill a god-sized hole. Somebody said that once, yeah. and it really spoke to me. God is infinitely large he, we un, unfathom with it so that there's this god-sized hole and we're trying to fill it with all these worldly things right. no matter how much we put in it right. there's going to be an infinitely more an infinitely larger amount of space that we have to fill and and the things that we want to put in that in that hole to fill and 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 seemingly um uh, gr- become happy from from whatever we do it grows and grows and grows you know right. why are yeah. why are billionaires miserable because yeah. they keep filling that hole with more and more stuff, more and more things, and there's nothing that can fill that hole besides God. He already had it. He already had. He was with God, yeah. and he and he chose to leave, yeah. thinking in his na- naivety, naive, 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 ugh, naivety. There you go. That that he could find happiness in the world, or not knowing what you've got. Yeah. You know, because maybe if you've grown up, that this can be speaking to some people that have grown up in the faith. It's just this is what they've always known. You know, you that's can, a great point. Someone could say like, "Oh no, like, you've got it. You're here. You, yeah, you've got God." You know, because I can speak to myself as I didn't really know how awesome having God in your life is until I left. Until I and I didn't leave all in that some extreme way or anything, but like there was a time in my life where it was just not that big of a deal. And then I came and realized, like, oh, wow, 
you know, I need God. But this look at look at the people who are being persecuted around the world. We're we're about to go to this march to yeah. to walk in solidarity with Christians who are being persecuted, and those people are often the greatest example of our of living out our faith. Yeah. When when they they have to uh, celebrate their faith in in secret because if they if they do they might be they might be killed they might, be killed. They might yeah. be, uh, have to move they might w- whatever horrible fate will come but amidst that persecution you see this pure joy and this pure desire yeah. to be with God because because they know the importance of it it's not just like eh, I can go to church whenever and it's it's easy and this is all I've ever known yeah. there's uh, you know it's 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 it might be easy to fall into that trap of just like eh, whatever right. you know yeah exactly so, so that might be the, the 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 circumstance for this yeah. young gentleman in the story here so I think that it's a story that that, that filling his life of dissipation is that is that sense of we all can relate to that we all go through parts of our life where we're trying to fill ourselves with things as you're saying fill this god-sized hole with human things that, that will never fill that end up emptying us especially nowadays like the young people of this world like you know it, you people in their 20s and 30s that are just like wanting to go out and do things and and social media is the key and being involved in a hookup culture or a, a substance abuse kind of culture where these things are glorified in music and television and movies and uh, just the overall lifestyle of what you think you need to live and that ends up just being a life of just emptying emptying so that's dissipation. the next line that's the life that they're living that's the next line when he had freely spent everything when yeah. he had free on his own will, he went out, he lived a life of of lavish, you know, what he thought was this this, this fulfillment. Right. And he and he ended up what he was doing was emptying Being himself. himself. Yeah. Right? When you freely spent everything, meaning like, okay, you've now you've got nothing. There's no left to fill. You can't fill yourself up anymore with this stuff. Right. It's run you dry. So at this point, a severe famine strikes the country. And he finds himself in dire need. He's in trouble. Guys, when is the uh, Prodigal Son movie coming out? They got to make that movie. It'd probably be like a, a short film. Th- It'd be I, like a film, like like a Pixar. When Pixar does like the short films, they could make that a movie. They made Pirates of the Caribbean into a five part franchise on a little ride you ride in Disneyland. I love those movies. You know what I mean? When I, I remember when that first movie came out, I was like. No, how is this? Possible? How is this? How are they possibly making a movie? I ride this little dink, rinky dink ride down, uh, down this little, this little. Wa- By the way, do you like Pirates of the Caribbean? The ride at Disneyland. Um, comment I, in. I like it because of line to ride ratio. Oh, there, okay. There's that. Because like you, you on some rides, you're in line for 45 minutes, and then you ride the ride for 30 seconds. With Pirates of the Caribbean, you're, you're in on line there for a while. You're on. Yeah, you can really sit and relax, and it's cool in there. It kind of smells bad sometimes, but <laughs> but it's like it's like fun, and, and you know. I, so I I, I, would, I dig it. Usually, well, I don't know. I haven't been to Disneyland in a while, and maybe I'm in a different mindset now. Sure. But I was like, let's get on, let's go on uh, on Star Tours, let's go sure. on Space Mountain, all the exciting rides, and everyone's like, oh my gosh, I love Pirates of the Caribbean. We got to go on Pirates. And you're like, and I would always go, guys, it's boring. I'm warning you, it's boring. And they go, no, 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 I love it. It was my favorite ride when I was a kid. And we're like, and they're like, look, the line's not that long. And everyone says, and so they, they they talk me into it. And I'm like, all right, let's do it. And we get on, and like three minutes, and everyone's like, oh my gosh, this is so boring. You just uh, you just cruising down I the like river. It. I like it. It's all like all okay. I I could talk about Disneyland for a while. I have I have thoughts, but comment in. Do you guys like Pirates of the Caribbean? Do you guys like the movie? I love the movies. List your favorite. Your list Pirates of the Caribbean favorite movies in best to worst order. Me right now? Oh sure. And then you guys in the comments too. Uh, best to worst order. Yeah. Uh, well, was the, there five of them? There's, or just four? I don't think there's I saw, five. I don't think I don't think there's I saw five. number five. Uh, so the best one is Curse of the Black Pearl, number one. Yeah. I think three is the second best one. Ooh. Okay. Uh, then two. Then four, then five. I thought three was the worst. I fell asleep in the theater. I went to the premiere, like the midnight premiere. Really? And I was like, this sucks. I thought it was cool. I love two. It was so silly, but like that scene when they're like on that wheel sword fighting That's or whatever. Two. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Back, back in the day. Anyways, Pirates of the Caribbean. One is hands down way better than 
any the of them. They, they could have just stopped at one, but so, then again, they made a billion dollars. So, so. My, my point is... They could totally make this. They have way more here to go on than Pirates of the Caribbean did, and they, so they made could, that. So they could make a. We can make a Prodigal, Prodigal Son, Son the movie. franchise. Okay, a six-part movie franchise with prequels and everything. Prequels, <laughs> right? All right. So get to so, work on so that. So the point is, there's a famine. <laughs> there's a. Fa- <laughs> In true two Kathy dude style, he's got no. We, <laughs> we sidetracked a bit. Thanks for sticking with us through that. Famine hits the land. He's in dire need. He's got nothing. The movie critics are in. Uh, it's it's. Uh, this is a tough time for him. Okay, so where are we at? He he had to hire himself out to one of the local citizens who sent him to his farm to do what? Feed the pigs. He tends to the swine. He feeds the pigs. Which. In the ride, Pirates of the Caribbean, there's that really famous scene where the dude is sleeping with the pigs. That's right. Maybe it's him. Yeah. Maybe there's a connection. And in the movie. Is there a connection this whole? In the main character, like one of the main characters in the movie, they find him with the pigs and like throw water on him. Oh, yeah. That's what's what's his Uh, name. uh, Gibbs. So, so yeah. I uh, just wanted to to make that parallel. We'll have a full... We're, we're <laughs> gonna start doing movie reviews, or but with a Catholic twist. What if what if each episode is a Bible study slash movie review? <laughs> would you guys, would you watch that? It's late. We're making this work anyway. Here so he has to tend to this one, which in that time is I mean in any time really, unless you're like a pig farmer. And yeah, that's what farmers you do. are like that's what you do. But it's like fine. at that time, that is like what the slaves would do or the servants would do. The lowest that, that's of the, the low. lowest, the lowest job thing. you could have. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously, we know that this guy, this son, his father had money. He uh, he. If you had enough money to give him his inheritance up front. It's it's. Uh, so he came from wealth. Yeah 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 exactly. So now but, he's doing this. This really low-level job. It's even worse than, than that because the line is, and he longed to eat his fill of the pods on which the swine fed, but nobody gave him any. So he didn't even, he, he was lower than the pigs. He couldn't, they, they were, the, the pigs, feeding the pigs was more valuable to the owner than feeding this person. Exactly. So it's just that, uh, it's that, that dramatic image of having everything in God to having be literally absolutely nothing, being so empty that, you, that you're lowest of the low. Yeah, I think there's another point to it too, is that the value that the, that the world had in him, that saw in him. Ooh, I like this. I like where it you're going. Wasn't, it wasn't even like, you're not even worth, I'd rather feed my pigs than feed you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he was the value that the world saw in him. Well, he had everything, right? This lavish life, and then as soon as he had nothing, the world looked at him like he had nothing. Mm-hmm. You, you're, I'd rather, you know, you're lower than my pigs. Wow. You know, just the value that that the world put on him when he all of a sudden the earthly possessions were gone. How the earth valued him. How the people of the world valued him. Do you we'll, think it's we'll, like we'll the way that the world viewed like pirates back in the day? Probably. No, they were like criminals. The pirates were criminals. They they were okay. They were romanticized in the movies, but like pirates are terrible people. Horrible. So moving on. <laughs> anyway, so let's let's. What's the next part? Get to it. C- coming to his senses, he thought, "How many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food to eat?" But here I am, dying from hunger. So we move on to again. We know he came from wealth. Yeah, his father could afford servants. Anything he wanted. Anything he, he wanted, had. he had. Um, so that, that, that realization of like, think of like the people that work for my father. I didn't work for my father. I was my father's son. They're all eating their fill. They're being taken care of tonight. And I can't even eat what the pigs are eating. That's rock bottom. That's rock that's bottom. That's biblical so, rock <laughs> that's bottom, right. folks. That's right. And that's what it takes, you know, in, in like these, these, uh, 12 step programs or whatever yeah. like, like to get to that realization that you have a problem you got to hit that rock bottom so sure. our uh, our character here from our parable from our parable cinematic six part series has hit rock bottom this is this is that moment in episode 2 when uh, things you think things can't get any worse, you have to it's stop that, with the pirates. They're not. You're not. They're, that part's over. You keep trying to get back to it. Yeah, you don't know the movies that well to do these parallels. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so he's coming to the realization that 
oh, maybe maybe this was a mistake, right? Yes. So here I am dying from hunger. I shall get up and go to my father, and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer to, to de- I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat Hold me on. as you would Pause one of right your hard workers. All right, that was a lot. But that part's important. It's really important. That stands up. He he stands up and chooses to go back. He acknowledges his faults. And I think that's a big thing that we can all recognize. Is it's not just... Because we all know the end of the story, what's going to happen. He goes to his dad and his dad welcomes him and everything. And we'll get to that. But the point of the matter is, is he stands up in his filth and his sin. And, he's, and he acknowledges, I am going back. He didn't get a telegram, a yeah. phone call, no. a post postcard. Nobody went, oh, said, you it's can, time you to come home it. now, yeah. son. He went, he recognized within himself, in his own heart. He looked within and went, I need my father. Mm-hmm. I need my father. But then he recognized too. He singing this, telegram, but, a singing telegram coming and okay, go on. No. So he recognizes here too <laughs> that this point of I he allows the way that the world views him to to be how he identifies himself. Well, that, I'm not a great worthy mm-hmm. to be my father's. I I'm not his son anymore. Right? Because the world has told him he got so beaten down. He's so belittled, so emptied that he now, that's how he views himself. So then he says, I'm going to go to my father and say that I'm not worthy, but I just, I, I need anything I can get because that's what, okay, he sees himself because that's the way the world has now told him to be. There's a little bit of that and a little bit of uh, humbling yourself because sure. if, he went back to the, if he went back to his father, it was like, God, he's like, Dad, I'm so great. I deserve to come back. Sure. You'd be like, I think it's a bit mm, of both. Yeah. Settle, settle down. I, sure. I don't know. Bit of both. I think so. Either, either way. Okay. So, but yes, he made that decision. He's like, He made the decision. This ain't it. Yeah. This ain't it. I got to go back, right? Uh, I no longer de- to I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. Uh, and so he's assuming he's assuming when he goes back that is that his dad's going to be like. Oh, guess who's back? Yeah, like, how'd well, it go? Well, well. Look at you, all, all swined up. <laughs> swined up. <laughs> you know, he's he's probably he's probably still covered in like covered in dirt and mud and grime filth and, and grime and whatever uh, swine stuff, like g- super gross, right? So uh, he's assuming his dad's gonna be like, yeah, like you can come back, but like there's a pickaxe get to work right yeah, right you know and he's and he would be like that's enough for me there's yeah. something to that as well is like uh our humbleness of like where you know um i'm willing to do what it takes to, to get back to get back right um i i'm that desire to i will work hard you put me to work but i i want i want i desire to be with you so much that um that i'm willing to do whatever we got to take a break we, i don't want to go to we're about we're, we got this. We're coming back. All right, we're back doing our Bible study, talking about the prodigal son and kind of Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna get so so we're 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 about halfway three quarters. We got this. So so we're gonna bring it home. We're ending it with here or we're, we're, where Pointed we left it. off was that the son is covered in his filth. He and he humbles himself, or he sees himself. The way the world has now painted right, him. Right. So he goes before his father. He goes to his father. What's so the I no longer part? deserve. Yeah, yeah, we're there. Okay, so he got up and went back to his father. This part's really important. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son and embraced and kissed him. So pause. So there's two two huge things here. One, context. In old times, or in the time of the scriptures when these were written, Older Jewish men did not run. That's not a thing that you did. Apparently, jogging, it's just like running for a long, long time. But, like, but you didn't run, <laughs> is the point. Is like, you didn't, like, there was no yeah, reason for that. Right. The f- physical fitness wasn't a thing. People yeah, weren't working out. But it was, it was to, like, that's what the, the, the hands did. Right. They hustled. You, you had, you were a man of, you could take your time. Exactly. You, you know? I love and, that. I love that. I, and, I never really thought about and that. And he doesn't matter. He ran to his son when he was still a long way off. So it's not like, get back all the way over here. No. He was still technically on his way back. And the father went out to meet him. 
because he knew he saw my son's coming back. I'm going. I'm running to him. And that he embraced and kissed him. F remember, folks, it was not a so glad you're here, take a quick shower, and I, I'm happy to greet you. It was embraced, embraced, kissed, intimate, like I just imagine I love you in his utter filth. I imagine in one all of those, his mistakes. I imagine one of those hallmarks. Sorry. I hallmarks. imagine one of those hall hallmark moments where like he's running full speed at him and then the sun starts running and they meet and he grabs him and then they do like a, they like spin around while he's like embracing him I, sure yeah that's <laughs> i guess that's possible that could that could happen the the the, the point and and the point is is it's that that i think that we want to make is it's not about you don't need to be cleaned right exactly we t he's not he's a mess his life isn't fixed. Yeah, he acknowledged that his life was a wreck. But his life's not fixed. He's not put back together. He's still messy. He's still a failed. He still sinned. He still did all these terrible things. He has not made it right. He's not asked he's not even asked for forgiveness yet. He just showed up. He just showed up and was embraced by the father. Keep going. The other point yes. I like that is that the th the the part the part where he's running, uh, I've heard this before. It's we because he had to make the the son had to make all the effort of like traveling back to the land, right? Sure. And and, and w however whatever that journey was for him, he had to make that effort. But as soon as the father caught his eye, he bolted at him, right? But so that's that's the saying that I've heard before. It's like us here on earth us as human beings, we need to reach up as high as we possibly can to heaven, as high as we possibly can. And God will reach down the rest of the way. Right. And it's, uh, as, and, and sometimes we think we can reach, I heard this the other day, I was, I was listening to a podcast and they said, if you, if you're talking to a group of people in a, in a, in a audience or whatever, and you say, I want, I want you all to reach up your hands as high as you can in the air. And then everybody does it, or seemingly does it, do do it. Then you go, all right. Now I want you guys to reach up even further, and like everybody will somehow manage to reach up further, because like sub subconsciously we don't give our full effort or whatever. So we need to pretend like we were at that convention or whatever, and he asked us three times, and we reached up as high as we possibly could. So, but the point is that he made a lot of the effort to come back to the father but as soon as as soon as he caught his eye he he ran right back to him yeah. right yeah. okay so so there's a lot of good points there all right but uh, this 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 part's really crucial to the story uh, his son call, said to him father i have sinned against heaven and i sinned against you i no longer to i no longer deserve to be called your son like he was thinking earlier now he actually said like he it rehearsed it. he was just saying that he the whole way he was walking <laughs> back <laughs> he rehearsed I've it. sinned against you i've sinned against you hopefully he said it better than i did all three times i tried to say that sentence <laughs> i said it backwards or something okay but his father ordered his servants quickly bring the finest robe and put it on him put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet stop so because we're probably gonna but like, so imagine that, so this is and this is so now we go back to the father not only he ran to him he embraced him in his filth and then the guy the son is like hey well i am the worst and the father doesn't go yeah when yet he's not yet gone you do you do suck you did <laughs> you, you did do bad things <laughs> you do suck like he hasn't oh not once right. so far all he's done is embraced him and then said Make bring him the finest things, royalty, At, all, all give things it value, all things right that there. were value and, and symbols make, of royalty. Let right? me show you, let me make you right now, let me remind you how valuable you are to me. That's what God does is when we come and say, We're nothing, God goes, You're everything, you don't have to do anything, you're everything by showing up to God. Just by being there in all of your disaster and everything in your life that's bringing you down, that's hurting you, that you think makes you filthy and unworthy to stand before the Father, he puts the finest robe, the best ring, and says, you are valuable just how you are now. God dresses you up and makes you valuable. You don't have to do it yourself. God does it. God commands it upon your life. That, that's, a, that's so powerful. Carry on. 
That was, that was a good moment. I specifically didn't interrupt because I wanted at least one good soundbite of this episode of me not like interjecting with something stupid about Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> Great job. I, I appreciate that. Sure, man. <laughs> Uh, this this next line goes with what you're. It's, it's, this is continuing on that symbolism. Take the fat and calf and slaughter it. Then let us celebrate with a feast. Now, feast often uh, Jesus keeps talking about feasts. And he he talks about the kingdom of heaven is like a feast. Right? It's, a, it's important. It's a celebration. It's a big deal. They don't happen often. They need a reason, mm-hmm. you know. And and the fat and calf that means that like they've been waiting a while. Like this is an important time to do that. You know, it, 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 and the and the calf, that's like good quality meat. So it's top it's top, a, dollar top, stuff, dollar top stuff. It's got your ribeye. You think it's like a ribeye, or they made like a top sirloin? I have uh, no uh, idea. What they probably making. not pot roast. They made like <laughs> they made like a <laughs> like a like a like a crock pot stew situation. Probably not. It was Pro- it was the real deal stuff. Probably you know? yeah. I I don't know how they barbecue. Yeah, just it was a big deal. <laughs> Very important animal to be. Comment given. in what's your favorite kind of um, beef way to celebrate or way to way to cook up a fattened calf. <laughs> all right, um, all right. So then they. Beca- how do you like your fat? How calf? do you like a fattened calf? You want? You- <laughs> That's what I'm gonna order next time we're like, at the restaurant. You want like a tea- <laughs> Can I get my fattened calf medium give, rare? Give me your finest fattened calf, please. <laughs> uh, how would you like that medium? Me- oh, how do you guys like your steak? Medium, medium. Well, come. We just want to engage with you guys, please. <laughs> Tell us your favorite movie. Tell us your favorite steak. Whatever. Just talk to us. All right. Um, because or you guys know this line. Because the son of mine, this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and he has been found. Yeah. Boom. So, so now it's not only we, we talked about the, the giving him value, embracing him in his filth, but now still not once has he gone. Mm. You suck. <laughs> there was no finger. It didn't say not once. It's, in parentheses, oh, there was there was a little. It says uh, yeah. in parentheses he was wagging his <laughs> finger the whole time. <laughs> he hasn't yet. Mm-mm-mm. He has not once no. yet since any disappointment. All he's done is embraced, made valuable, and now celebrated this sinner. In filth. Who said that you are dead to yeah. me? Who, he said you're dead who to me. Betrayed and turned his back and left. You have. This, the father has ran to, embraced, made valuable, and celebrated. Yeah. Yeah. The last thing. Th- th- there's people that I love in my life that haven't done all that great stuff for me. Right. Imagine if your best friend went like, Danny, you're dead to me. I never want to see you again. Leaves. And then the first thing when he he comes back and you see him, you like run up and give him a big hug. You'd probably be like... Mm, bro, we gotta iron some stuff out. Yeah, right we got now. we have some chat. We got some too. we got some beef. Yeah. Fat and calf type beef <laughs> to, to like settle this situation first. But I'm not putting any ring on your finger, all but right? That's absolutely true. Right. Exactly. But with God, there isn't that. Yeah. There isn't that stuff. Okay. Um uh, okay, this part this part's really important. This is what I was thinking that was earlier. Okay. Then the celebration began. Now though, the older son had been out in, uh, out in the field and on his way back as he neared the house he heard the sound of music and dancing he called one of the servants and asked him what this might mean the servant said to him your brother has returned and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf because he has him back and safe he has him back and safe and sound he became angry and when he refused to enter the house his father came out and pleaded with him let's stop right there I think I think unless there's more to that so, part. So so this is yeah. and I can yeah, I can yeah. relate a little bit to this guy, right? If I was I'm the older brother in a lot of situations, all of them in fact. <laughs> and if my younger brother all the situations in all you're, my brother you're, you're always situations. the older brother. Um, that doesn't change. But I would be like, are you kidding me? I'm here working so hard, and he's they don't think he's, he just cruises in cruises here and gets, in and gets he wants. everything like gets you know. He he gets embraced, valued, and celebrated, and I. He's like, I what do nothing. I get? He thinks he in his wor- in his mind he says I get nothing. I get nothing. Right. I've got, he got everything, and I got nothing, and I'm mad about it. I'm ma- I'm mad. I lo- I envision this this scenario of him just sitting on the porch, just hmm, <laughs> and the dad has to come and be like, all like, right, right. But so this is this is the important part there, uh, and I and. Always, uh, before I say this, is like always when we're reading scripture, we say 
how how are we, how does this speak to our lives? How does it speak into our modern times? But also, how do I see? Where do I see myself in this story? And often we can put ourselves in in a lot of the 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 uh, people in the in in these stories, right? right? We're not just one. We can see ourselves from the lens of certain characters, right? But how many times have, in our life have we seen ourselves through the older son, the elder son, who's just like dad? Ugh, I think a lot. Me? I think a lot of times. How many times has us as the church been that son? Right. Where we see somebody that's coming into church that maybe we know that they've struggled with things before or someone that's come back. I look I, I talk about it at youth group all the time. Maybe a, a, a young person that's been away from the church or someone that's struggled with things that like are, are we the teens that I talk to my leadership about it. Are we the people that go, Oh geez, I yeah, know yeah, what yeah. you've done. Right. I know where you've been. Yeah. Are we the we're the older brother? You know? So this line is really the same principle as the parable about the workers in the field. You know the parable, I, 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 we did the episode on parables, I don't know which one this is, I, I'm assuming it's from Matthew, is where uh, the worker hires somebody at like 9 a.m. and they work a full day, but then he hires somebody else at 11 to start working and then somebody at 2 and then yeah. and then somebody somebody literally just starts work at 4, 4 p.m. and then they're all done at 5 p.m. Yeah. And then he at the end of the day, he gives them all the same amount. And the guy who started working at like 6 a.m. or 7 a.m., they're like, are you kidding me? Like, I worked all day and you gave the guy that came in at the last second the same amount as me? How is that fair? It's right. not fair. But we're not talking about our earthly and our worldly possessions and our worldly money and our right. world. It doesn't make sense for us to think in terms of how we would think on earth. But we're talking about the kingdom of heaven. Right. And nothing when it ta- when we're talking about kingdom of he- kingdom of heaven nothing makes sense in terms of what we're talking about down here right so you can't ha- being with god is having everything it's having everything. anything that you could possibly want that's all that's all that we need and you can't have more of something if if you fill up something to its entirety you can't have more so this older son just like the just like the worker at 6 a.m. or noon or 5 or 4 p.m. they all eventually got everything that they could ever desire and want no matter when they got it right so the older son always had everything yeah he, he always and, had and, it and he says it read that read that last so line. the line is he said to his father in reply look all these years i served you and not once did i disobey your orders yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends but when your son returns who swallowed up your uh, swallowed up your property with prostitutes for him you slaughter the fattened calf he said to him my son you are here with me always you are here with me always everything i have is yours but now we must celebrate and rejoice because your brother was dead and has come to life again he was lost and has been found so that that sense of like you know my love you know the importance of that fulfillment. You found fulfillment in it. You know, and he says it like, I've never disobeyed you. I've never, di- I, I, I'm here. And, and the father's basically like, yes, like you are. You know, you understand. Like, yes. You, and sometimes, you know, I think we can feel that, that our, our, the, all of us that, that know God and we, and we see the, we sometimes we see the people that come back and they have these amazing moments and every I used to say on retreats right is I, I to the leadership team of it was a lot of the young people that have been around for a long time and they've been on retreats and and the kid that comes and they give a, a testimony about how they found God and then they get all the love and attention and everything else and then the kids that have been there for a long time they're like what the heck yeah like why can't I like I, I've always been here I've always been part of the youth group how come this young guy that now all of a sudden has a sad story and has been through stuff. Why? Why is he being loved? And and I always tell them, I'm like, because they need it right now. You know, because you already have it. You have the joy of God in your life every day. We're celebrating that he's just discovered it. And then someday he'll be in your shoes. Hopefully, we pray. And when somebody else is is found, he'll be able to celebrate too. And he may feel the same things that you do. Well, what the heck? I've been here for four years or five years or, and and it. We have to recognize, it goes back to that, we talk about recognizing God. That, that's the hard part about being the older son, is we have to recognize what we have. And it can be hard, because we can get used to it. If we live with it every day, we can kind of get in that stagnant, not understanding. But once we recognize that we have it, God gives us everything. We have everything we could want with God. And we need to celebrate those people that come to find that. 
and 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 celebrate with them you know yeah exactly those are those are amazing points uh i was i was half listening and half uh thinking about how i could tie in pirates of the caribbean at the end of this because we just <laughs> you can't I, because nothing compares to the kingdom of heaven not even pirates, nothing, not, not even, even pirates, pirates of, of the, the caribbean, caribbean. Whether we're talking about the ride or the movies, but what could compare is the cinematic version adaptation, adaptation of Prodigal Son. So, guys, get to work. Get to work. Who uh, can we call Spirit Juice Studios or uh, Family Studios down here? Or what's the one that just did uh, some of those Christian ones? They could probably do a decent job. Yeah, I don't know. It ended up being like you've seen some of those movies. You're like, mm. some are great, some are like, Whew. We're, you know what? I want to do an I want to do a whole episode. Or well, I want to do a bunch of movies, but sometimes you can get more Catholic ideology and and imagery and metaphors and and just how Catholic, to live a Christian life. Catholic truth from a regular secular secular movie. Bishop Barron often does reviews on just regular movies, even if they're like ooh, questionable. We potentially are going to start doing that. Yeah, I want to. Ryan wants to. We dived into it. We want to look at movies we want to sit down and watch a movie take notes and then do a podcast breaking down the movie yeah and i think that it'd be very interesting to see and it might inspire people to go watch the movies right and we'll do some christian movies we'll do some non-christian movies but i i think that as addition to our scripture study ones that we've been doing podcasts we want to start doing the movie review episodes too and i like that idea because our whole our whole podcast theme the lens of of what we do is is living out your Catholic faith and your Catholic values in everything you do, realizing you, that you don't live your your life in a church bubble. Yeah, you know, you know we work at our church, so we're often at our churches a lot. A lot, but like when we go out into the world, how are we living our lives? That's that's what our podcast is about, and I hope that you guys get that from that. And if you're watching a movie, look for God that's, in that that's movie. That's where I was going. Look with that. for God right. in the movie. He's right. there. He's there. God's God's truth is spoken through more than just our experience in, during liturgy. And it goes back to look for God. Acknowledge when God is there. Be always looking. Yeah. And always looking. Don't go, oh, well, I'm not at church anymore, so God's not around. No, God is there. God is, look, look everywhere. He's there. He's actively pursuing you we are we need to be actively pursuing him in our life no matter what we're doing or watching that's right whether you're watching pirates of the caribbean or reading scripture or reading scripture you know so but you but like i like that you said you have to actively think about it you have to active actively pursue god you gotta yeah. you gotta run back you gotta lift up as high as you possibly can and then lift a little bit higher well, and God's going to come down and you're going to realize that he that he was with you all along but like he is there. He's going to come and encounter you like we talked about on the last episode. Well, we talk we go back to the Wonderful. scripture. Like we, we have to go I need to go to God. And that's an everyday decision. It's not just a when we're in the filth decision. Waking up and going I need to go to God is an everyday decision. I've said it I said it on the podcast I put we, we had a quote on Instagram. Choosing God, being with God is an everyday decision to wake up and choose God. But you know what? You can choose him on Monday, but you also need to choose him Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then all over again mm -hmm. the next week. Every single day, you need to choose God. You need to choose to pursue him, choose to look for him, choose to let him be part of your life. God's already done his part. God pursues us every day. We need to now do our part in that. That's right. And... and I love I love that we're doing this. I'm getting so much out of it. I hope you guys are as well. And like looking looking so deeply into these into these scripture passages yeah. that we we find most a lot of that we had we had known before or somebody had told us or we had we had discovered. But some of that again we just we just discovered because we stopped at like every line and said what is what is really the deep, the deeper meaning here? And so like whether you're reading scripture and and taking it apart in that detail like doing Le uh, Lexio Divina or or watching a movie, but taking it for something deeper than it than it might be. Whether or not the writers intended it, is is to view that movie and and, and actively watch it, uh, looking for God's truth in it. Because if you're not, you're not going to find it. You're not going to see it. It's not, not going to. It's, it. it's probably not going to hit you over the head. But then you're if you start to do that more often, you're gonna. It's it's like a muscle. If you keep flexing it, it's going to start growing. And you're going to be able to start seeing God's beauty, God's goodness, and God's truth in all aspects of the world. But if, yep. you, if you're not used to doing that, if you're not used to breaking open this book right here, if it's sitting on your shelf and you haven't opened it up, 
you're not going to get used to how to do that. And if you haven't dived into movies, television shows, music, or whatever it is in your life, and say, "Where is God in this?" You're not going to. You're going to be blinded to His truth in all aspects, all yeah. aspects of your life. And it makes God a church thing. Oh, not, right, 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 and not a life thing. Right. Being with God is not about showing up on Sunday at mass. Being God is actively choosing to let him be a part of everything you do in your life. Yeah, you don't go like, I... Don't put God in a box. I go to church on Sunday and I do the church thing. You know, I see some of my buds. We get some donuts and coffee afterwards. I see some of the nights. We give elbow bumps because we can't fist bump right now. And then you know what? I just live like my regular life the rest of the week. Well, it, it goes back to, I, I saw this once and it was don't put God in a box. If there's a little box and on Sunday you open the box and God gets to come out <laughs> and then God's around and it's like, hooray. And then when you want to go hang out with other people that maybe not know that you're a follower, you go, God, get back in the box. And then you got put back in your box and you put the box in your pocket and now God's not there anymore. Don't, God's on it. God doesn't deserve to be in a box. He's in... You know, yeah. we, we, we need to be actively be vessels of, of God's goodness, truth, and beauty in, in everything we do. This is a very long winded wrap up, but, um, we appreciate everybody that's watching. And, uh, these are, these scripture studies are, are really, really awesome. I'm, I'm really loving them. Uh, I'm expecting a lot of comments for this episode. We're, 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 we're talking favorite pirates episodes. Do you like the ride? What's your thoughts on Disneyland? Do you like, how do you like your meat? How do you like <laughs> We had all kinds of weird stuff in this episode. Uh, but you know what else you could do uh, aside from uh, liking our comments, liking our comments, liking our videos, well, commenting on comment, our comments. you can like those. Yeah, yeah sure. But uh, if you can, we'd love your support on Patreon. Uh, we do have a Patreon forward slash two Catholic, wait, what is it? No, underscore two Catholic dudes. Nope. Just on, For, just, it, just search two Catholic dudes on two Patreon. Two Catholic dudes on Patreon. The link is all over the place. If you can help us in that way, we'd really appreciate it. Uh, it means a lot. It helps us to continue to grow. Um, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Facebook, Twitter, and um, we're okay. We're no, we're probably not going to do Twitter. It's just it's tough. But if you guys start engaging with us on Twitter, we'll probably jump on. Okay, uh, underscore two Catholic dudes on Instagram. That's our main platform. Two Catholic dudes on Facebook and two Catholic dudes on Twitter. We funnel out from there. But really, start engaging with with us on YouTube. We'd appreciate that because yeah. that's where uh, and it's YouTube at Ryan Class Music. That's right. That's right. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff. There's music. There's uh, reflections. Ref yeah, yeah. You were, there's going to be a lot more content, and the more, if you guys want to please uh, help us out in any way, shape, or form, it might uh, be able to free us up from some of the other things that are bogging us down so we can devote more time and energy to this channel. So yeah. we thank you guys for that. Uh, what a ride this has been. Wow, this is great. I love this. Word. All right, All right. guys. Uh, <laughs> let us know what scriptures you want us to dive into next. We'll yeah. do that in the uh, future. Put that in the, in the comments. That's, that's okay. Put that at the top and then put all the other stuff in there, okay? <laughs> so we will, we will jump into the next scripture based on your comments. We appreciate that. But as always, we'll see you guys next week. And uh, hope you're having a great week. That's it. We're going we're gonna to land this plane. We'll see you then. All right. Peace. Peace. Peace.